about human rights violations across China and concerns about the situational traffic continues to pandemic. Uh, integrity system is the most advanced. You can ask the guys that built the DRX hurricane and knocked us down. And when we got up, the coal came on and just knocked us flat on our back. Welcome back, everybody. Off grid living and survival prep here. So, what are we doing today? Generally, I don't do uh, videos like this on tools and, and that sort of thing. I think this is probably my first one. Um, but yeah, it's an important part of homesteading is having a chainsaw, being out in the bush, even survival. If you have a chainsaw with you, you're going to have a, a lot better chance of getting firewood quickly and staying safe. But with anything else, um, like anything else, these saws require a lot of maintenance depending on how much you're using them. The worst thing about a chainsaw is is that once it touches you and it's running and that that chain you know that's razor sharp when it's brand new or just sharp and once it touches you there's no forgiveness um, and it is such a remote high-powered um, tool saw that when you're in the bush and something does happen you better know what you're doing and you better be able to get out of there and get help um, because even I've been in situations where I cut my foot I cut uh, just on the upper portion of a steel-toed boot and it was pretty bad you know so i just i kept my my foot in the boot and got out and finally got back here and uh, i was okay but really important to get the safety gear um, underway like the pants the helmet the ear protection the eye protection um, before you start even before you even start to fire one of these things up you should really know um, really know what you're doing and they do offer a lot of really good chainsaw courses there's some online ones i've taken one uh, for work it's not that good it permits someone to actually take a saw and, and cut you know at their work which i think is completely wrong um there should be a, a level of you know aptitude um involved with that there should be some experience behind that but anyway that's my uh that's my plug on the safety for chainsaws what we're going to do today because i was out falling the tree here last i guess it was last november and i have this little saw so i take this little saw with me it's the MS-170 um, by Still, Steel, Still, whatever you call it. Um, look at my bar. Can you tell? See the wonk in it? I started falling the tree, and it was going okay. And the wind picked up just like today. Yeah, so I know I started cutting my uh, my wedge out, and I got my wedge cut out, and I went around to the backside for my back cut, and the tree started to blow. And it pinched my saw and I was I was scuppered. It was like a 60 foot high poplar, big plume on the top. And I the only thing I could do at that point was just was just give up. So I just disconnected my saw and uh, let the bar just get crushed and twisted and whatever. But yeah, so another thing with maintenance, you gotta check your bar. You know, check your bar to make sure it's straight. If not, your chain's gonna fly off all the time. Um, I'm not going to get into sharpening or anything. I'm just going to basically get into changing the chain. Uh, this is a brand new chain and a brand new bar. Brand new chain. You're going to get this straight out of the box like this. You go to your dealer, your local dealer. And I personally, I bring everything in. So if I have an old chain and I have the bar, I bring it all in so that uh, he or she can look at it. Um, and the experts can say to you, yeah, this is what you want. Like, don't go fumbling around through different sizes because there's a hundred different sizes. Just get them to do it. And it's a lot easier. So you'll see here on this chain, there's actually arrows on the one side. So obviously you want your sharp part of your blade, which is that really sharp little tooth there. You want it going, you know, clockwise because it's that's the rotation of the blade. And I've put them on backwards before. You know, I've put these on backwards and I start cutting them. Like, oh, you know, right away, nothing happens. But yeah, so there are actually um, arrows indented into each link right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little indented arrow. I think it's right there. And that'll show you the direction. So as long as you know the direction that your saw goes in when it's on, you're pretty good to go. So this bar is already out of here. Obviously, I took it out once the accident was happening. And on the side of your saw, you're going to have these two big nuts. So you just pop them off. You really try not to drop them. It's so icy here today. Man, it's so icy. We had a massive rainstorm and uh, it froze last night. Okay, so this cover comes off. Okay. 
this is this is pretty generic on almost all saws that I've ever worked on. Even like this old Johnson, it's the same stuff. But this is a good time to you know in inspect your plastics. Make sure your plastics are in good shape. Make sure these bushings in here are in really good shape too. So you don't want them coming off. They'll jam your saw up. They'll jam up your chain. Um, and just basically give it a give it a look. Give it a clean. They get pretty gummed up. I gave this one a pretty good clean already. Um, so yeah, it's looking uh, it's looking not bad. You know, check the drive. Make sure everything's tight. There's a lock pin here. Make sure it's still in there. I have adjustment with this here. This screw. So you, or this bolt, and you just dial it back or dial it forward, whichever way you want to. And you'll use that later to tighten up your chain. But yeah, just make sure it's clean. Make sure it looks really good. Make sure your oiler port right down there is nice and clean. And I'll tell you this, okay? Get one of these tools. Get one of these plug wrench tools that actually, you know, it'll work for, you know, taking the nuts off the side, tightening up your saw. It'll do everything you need it to do. And always keep it with you. So we'll clean it all out nice. So here we go. Here all I'm gonna do is just take my bar and I'm gonna set it as to where it's supposed to go. And then you just adjust this slider pin. So I push it, I push it so it's right back. So see this pin here? I'll push it so it's right back, okay? So that it's gonna give me a lot of slack in my chain and I'm not gonna be fighting. Um, fighting the process quite as much and then this just slides right over top just like that so now you know you're lined up and you have the most slack you can get out of your chain which is what you want because if you don't then you're you're kind of chasing your tail so then you're just going to put your chain back on your bar you pull the bar pull the bar tight towards you and it tightens everything up and now you can see where your chain's sitting on your cogs. You make sure your chain's still going in the right direction. You didn't mess that up. And you're all lined up in here. So you got your pin, your adjustment pin there and your bolt holes are, are lined up. So I just keep a bit of tension on my bar. Take your plastic shroud or your protection cover and it slides on just like that. Take your nuts, these nuts. Thread them on, you know, hand tight, pretty hand tight if you can. There you go. So, you're assembled. Now you're not set. You don't have your chain set yet. You want to adjust the tension on your chain. So, let me just flip around so you can see me do that. So now you want to adjust the tension on your chain because if your chain's too tight, it's going to snap. If your chain's too loose, or it won't spin. Or if it's too loose, it's just going to flop off and you know catch you in the jaw and give you an ugly scar. So yeah, it's all together like this. This is why I love to have the vise. Sometimes I've even tied a rope through here and put it on a tree and set it on the ground and pulled it so that I have that tension, that constant tension. But I'll just put my bar in the vise. Just don't snub it so much that you're gonna break it or twist it, I mean. And then all I do, you can use the center pin adjuster, which is down here, but I'll tell you what I do. I just pull back on the handle like this. And it's so easy, so you pull back. And I wanna show you, you don't, you wanna have it so your teeth of the bottom teeth that are connected to the bar, that are on the bar side, can't pop out. So if you pick this up, and it looks like you could pull it over, it's no good. They have to just rest in there. That's pretty good. So you're just pulling on the handle a little bit like this. That's what I like doing anyway. I think that for me, it works a lot better than fussing around with that adjuster. But look at that. We've got nice tension. It might be a little bit too much right now. See that? I can't pull that out of the groove in the bar, which is what you want. You want it to stay in there. You snub up these nuts. These nuts. You've checked everything over. You're checking your brake, your chain brake, your throttle, your choke, all that jazz. And 
looks pretty good. This particular model was a bit cheaper. It was like $200. And instead of having the quick release caps here, so see these quick release caps? These aren't quick release, but these caps for your fuel and your oil. So this here's your uh, fuel oil mix, which is 50 to one on these saws. And then over here is your bar oil. So that's what lubes the bar while you're cutting. So this tool, you know, as handy as it is, that also allows you to check your fluid levels in this particular saw that doesn't have the quick release. So, you just, see? Unscrew the caps. Have a gander. I got some bar oil in it. This saw hasn't ran for like three months. I don't know how it's gonna, I don't know how she's gonna pop the fire. Why did that get so tight? You don't usually tighten these uh, very tight at all. You don't have to. It'll strip them, uh, it'll strip off in the housing here if you tighten them too much and then you're in for lots of trouble. It's basically what I do. I just tighten up by hand. So back here you have your choke. You pull your throttle, full choke is down there. You're gonna pull this thing until you hear it fire and then you're gonna knock it up to the next level of choke. Don't give it a few more pulls or it will flood. As soon as it fires, get that choke off. Okay, watch out, Omer. Go. So now what we're going to do, check to see if it came loose. It did come loose, okay? But the oiler's working, got oil on my chain. All I'm going to do, you know, and once it's set, I will use that adjustment screw on the front side of the saw. Now we put it back in the vise, loosen the bolts, and get her going again. I do. Might be wrong. Might not be. Might be just how I do it. I cut down lots of trees. I've worked in the bush a lot. Still got all my fingers and toes. Knock on wood. I have had some uh, pretty handsome had some family members though come out of the bush with some not so handsome scars on their face across their cheeks big gashes in their shins there's just so much to it. but all this video is for is to show you how I put a bar and a chain back on and set it for tension and get it ready to go I hope you found this video kind of uh, informative I know when I started the homestead and I mean cut down a lot of trees and that sort of thing but I was never alone you know I was never completely alone and when you're back there alone and you're cutting down trees your anxiety can go through the roof so you're better to just make sure all your gear is in really good shape and you know, what I just showed you there is a very basic run through. There's tons of videos, but that's just how I do it. How I change the bar, how I change the chain, how I check the tension, uh, how I start it, how the chain brake works, all that jazz. It's very small stuff, you know, and then you can get out and learn and practice cut, you know, doing your wedges and driving wedges in the back to, to do that sort of thing. And I'll do videos on that too, because now that I got my new gear here finally, um, I'll be able to start clearing some more land back there. So 
I love you lots. I hope you're enjoying the channel. Just a fun little video on uh, a really important part of, you know, both survival, surviving and uh, in the bush and homesteading. I don't think I could survive out here without a chainsaw. Um, but yeah, hope you're doing great. Please subscribe if you like to see more videos. And wherever you are, I hope you're doing great. Bye for now. violations across China and concerns about the HMO traffic continues to pandemic. Uh, integrity system is the most advanced. And you can ask the guys that built the DRX hurricane and knocked us down. And when we got up, the coal came down and just knocked us flat on our backs.